government outlined strategic priorities for the 2020 budget. Details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Friday, October 4th, I am Sharian Noel. The government of Grenada has outlined its strategic priorities for the 2020 budget, which will focus on four thematic areas. During the ceremonial state opening of the third session of the 10th Parliament on Friday, Governor General Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade outlined these as empowering our communities, growing our economy, protecting our environment, and strengthening institutions. These are all in keeping with the National Sustainable Development Vision 2020 to 2035, where sharper focus will be placed on housing, tourism, the business environment, youth, agriculture, education, culture, labor, and sports. Next year, work will commence on the St. John Housing Project. Additionally, plans are underway for private sector-led middle-income housing. In fact, my government is currently holding discussions with a private developer. My government will also pay special attention to heightening awareness of the need to incorporate environmental and climate considerations into housing construction. The Cecile says government will also strengthen linkages between tourism and other sectors to enable growth and attract more markets. In the coming year, my government will also focus on supporting the mainstreaming of sustainability practices throughout the tourism sector with a view to striking an appropriate balance between social, economic and environmental issues as well as promoting greater involvement in local communities in the sector so as to create jobs and improve livelihoods in villages across our country. In 2020, the government will also take advantage of new economic opportunities as it creates an investor-friendly business environment. Through a concessional loan from the World Bank, Grenada will develop the enabling environment and improve the government-to-business interface with the use of technology. Greater attention will also be paid to creating an investment-friendly environment conducive to both local and foreign businesses in areas that can contribute to economic diversification and transformation. Promoting increased value addition of our local products and exports, as well as strengthening ex support services, especially to small businesses and young entrepreneurs, will also be areas of focus. The presentation was held under the theme towards Vision 2035, empowering our communities, growing our economy, protecting our environment, strengthening our institutions. Moving along, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell says he's extremely satisfied with the content of the throne speech delivered by Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade to both Houses of Parliament on the occasion of the third session of the 10th Parliament. The throne speech was delivered under the theme Towards Vision 2035, Empowering Communities, Growing Our Economy, Protecting Our Environment, Strengthening Our Institutions. I think um, the, the emphasis on youth and the future of our young people, which of course um, implies the future of the country. And in that context, protecting our environment, climate, resilience, our infrastructural development, emphasis in economic activity and in diversification of our economy, agriculture, tourism, and climate smart agriculture activities, and the whole emphasis on spreading development throughout the country. During her presentation, Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade said her government remains committed to pursuing policies and programs conducive to macroeconomic stability and social progress. Dr. Mitchell says the opportunities they create will keep in line with the vision towards 2035. We believe that they, we have an excellent opportunity to do so. And I, I think the prospects, as you see, for, for expansion of economic activity for 2020 is going to be enormous. With what I see coming, it, uh, this year it's been good, but it will be far better next year. Dr. Mitchell says the focus on agriculture and expanding youth involvement in the sector is an initiative that will mean improvement in agricultural production and productivity with technology. Well, we see by doing so, I think you're doing many different things. For one, you're creating opportunities. Two, I believe that you are 
utilizing what Grenada has most, best, best, known to be best at, the question of our agricultural products, the beauty of our country tourism, the manufacturing sector with the potential that it has. I think this, these are some of the, the things I believe that are so essential for a small economy like ours. And with the, with the, with the level of ability of our young people that we're seeing, with the, the whole emphasis on technology, the ability to, to create jobs for the 21st century, I think the prospects look exciting. This is a national report. More news after the break. Grenada, it's coming as the Ministry of Youth, Development, Sports, Culture and the Arts brings to you National Youth Week 2019 and it's one full week of activities, vibes and action as the nation turns their attention on the nation's youth and it's from Saturday, October 19 till Saturday, November 2nd under the theme Embracing Opportunities, Sowing Higher, October 19th and 20th, National Community Service Weekend, Island Wide, October 26th, Health Walk and Ministers Address October 27th, Ecumenical Service and Peace Concerts. October 28th, Youth Vibe. October 29th, St. John's Youth Parliament. October 30th, Job Fair and Career Day. October 31st, Fun Nights. November 1st, Discovering Talents and Expo. And on November 2nd, it's National Youth Awards. So urging everyone to be a part of Youth Week 2019, October 19th to November 2nd. Welcome back. Adults and children with hearing loss will be fitted with hearing aid by members of the U.S.-based Starkey Hearing Foundation, who will be in Grenada this month. The foundation is returning after having visited in November last year when diaspora member Cecilia Yvon James brought the foundation to Grenada for initial meetings about a partnership to provide children and adults with hearing loss with free hearing aid. Details to this story from Annette Moore. Now in preparation mode for the Starkey Heron Foundation's return to Grenada, Michelle Braffitt, principal for the School for the Deaf, explained more about the Starkey Heron Foundation's objectives. Starkey is a company that provides hearing aid. Um, they would have been there for more than maybe 50 years. But in terms of the foundation itself, they have existed since 1984. And their founder, is William Austin. So Austin, he's a founder of Starkey Hearing Foundation and you'd, he will be coming to Grenada as well as along with his wife um, and they would actually be fitting hearing aids onto the students as well as onto adults. Braffitt told us when the Starkey Hearing Foundation will be in Grenada and what they intend to do while here. Starkey Hearing Foundation will be in Grenada from October 10th actually. They will be training persons in Grenada. We will have teachers from the different special schools who will be trained in aftercare so that they will be able to work with the students in the school who are fitted um, with hearing aids. And on the 11th, we would actually have the fitting of the hearing aids, uh, which will be done at a particular area in Grenada. Four members of the public wishing to embrace the opportunity offered by the Starkey Hearing Foundation, here is the procedure they must follow. The procedure is that you have a hearing test done, which can be done at the School for the Deaf. You contact the School for the Deaf at 440-2242. An appointment will be given to you. And then, after you would have done that test, you will then be put on a list if you have a hearing loss and then you will be qualified to be fitted with a free hearing aid which will be provided by Starkey Hearing Foundation in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. Through the Ministry of Education, we, the, um, for the past, the last two weeks, we had the opportunity, opportunity through the Special Education Unit to visit Caracol and P.T. Martinique and to do different assessment on students as well as adults and so we know that in Karaku and P.T. Martinique as well there are persons there who would have hearing loss so they too will be part of that um, fitting of hearing is part of that mission. Braffitt says this mission is not a one-off but will continue for two years following which the ministries involved will need to review ways to make this a sustainable opportunity. Following the mission in October 
what would happen is that um, part of the team will return in October to have aftercare. And that would be along with persons in Grenada who would be trained. So teachers as well as nurses would um, gain that training. They will continue that training on the, the, the days that they are back for the aftercare. And then they will return next year again where more persons would be fitted with hearing aids. So if you did not have the opportunity to be fitted with a hearing aid this time, then you still have that chance again for the next two years um, to be fitted with free hearing aids by Starkey Hearing Foundation. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. While not winning the competition at the international level, Grenada Brain B winner Giovanni Thomas has returned from South Korea with a great appreciation of the working of the human brain. Thomas, a student at the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, returned home earlier this week, accompanied by his parents, coordinator and coach after participating in the international competition. The aspiring neurobiologist says the experience gained from his participation will stay with him. It's probably the best experience of my life thus far. Meeting, meeting other teenagers across, from across the world who are interested in neuroscience just like I am was truly an amazing experience. Erin John, biology and mathematics teacher at the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School and coach is pleased with Giovanni's performance. I will have to say he did very well because based on the competition and the level of the competition questions, I would say, it's really interesting to see how a person that 13, 14, 15, 16 years old can actually answer those questions. Because it wasn't just basic questions, it was more like third order questions that we do in our med school. So for me, he, for his performance was very, very well done. Coordinator of the Grenada National Brain B, Gail Blackett, says that a different approach will be taken for the local competition in the future. We could prepare our students, but we do not know the question. So maybe we, from a different angle, we can look at it differently and maybe give the tutors little pointers as how they can prepare the students. But saying like you're preparing them and giving them the question, it just not, it's not a one-time thing or it's not a one week. Last year, the question was much easier, I must say, than this year. And this story just brought an end to the National Report for Friday, October 4th. Recapping the top story, government outlined strategic priorities for the 2020 budget. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.